What's up you guys? Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Today we're gonna be eating pesto pasta with noodles made of zucchini. I love regular noodles, but I typically feel sleepy after I eat them. I'm going with an alternative ingredient. Can you believe it? It took me more than four hours to make this. Because I wasn't just making it, I was actually taking photos and making a blog post for it. So if you're curious about how I made this, the recipe is in the description box. I put a link to my blog post. Let me give you a close tour before I dive in. We have grape tomatoes lining around the tray. We have pine nuts as well as mm, basil leaves, fresh basil leaves. Oh, it's heavy! Okay, so how I made the zucchini noodles is I use a spiralizer. I put a whole zucchini and then I twist it into this device and it creates noodle-like shapes. And then after I spiralize as much as I can, I have leftovers of the zucchini and they tend to come out in this shape. So instead of throwing the leftover zucchini, I roasted them in the oven. So no waste. They remind me of graphite pencils, the tops of it. You know how after you finish using a pencil, it gets stubby? It looks like that. Edible pencil stubs. So these guys remind me of stupas. And what is a stupa, you ask? They're a Buddhist shrine in the shape of a dome. And here we have a bowl of leftover pine nuts. Mmm, they're so delicious. Let's dive in! Actually, the pesto sauce, I just poured it all over the top. I still need to mix it. <laughs> pesto mustache. The sauce is made of garlic, uh, lemon juice, some salt, sea salt, uh, I put some pepper on here as well, black pepper. The crunchiness comes from the zucchini. I sauteed it lightly. Typically when I film a mukbang, I schedule it according to my productivity. So what I mean is, I like to film a mukbang when I don't need to be very productive afterwards. So that's why I like to film mukbangs on a Friday. Typically I edit hardcore the most on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I do not film a mukbang then. Because sometimes like, depending on what the food is, um, I could feel very sleepy. You know, I will get a food coma after filming. I know after eating this, I'm not gonna get sleepy. Because there's nothing in here that would cause a food coma. It's not high in sugar, and also not too much oil or salt. I used olive oil for the sauce. This dish is perfect for the spring season and even summer. If you cool this in the refrigerator, it could be like a very refreshing food on those hot months. Should we try one of the stupas? Okay, so on top, I brushed on some olive oil and then I also sprinkled on pepper, black pepper to be exact, and a bunch of dried herbs. And I popped it in the oven for about 10-15 minutes. Mmm, simple but delicious and healthy as well. Mmm, the inside of the zucchini, super juicy, so much moisture in there. The outside looks dry, and the inside, such a contrast. For me personally, I would eat this every day, but people who like flavorful food, You'd have to add more salt in. Oh, did you see how that tomato exploded? Mmm. I'm seeing the inside 
it's still not covered with sauce but the top parts are like mm, generously coated hot day if I put the fan on then it's gonna be noisy so I will just eat this in the heat <laughs> that's probably too much too many pine nuts on there but man I love pine nuts if you really love something sometimes you just don't mind Eating pine nuts is a treat for me because they're quite pricey. I think they're like $20 per pound. Let's mix it up. You really gotta wrestle with it. Okay, I'm not gonna venture into this territory because I'm gonna save some for my mom and it'd be nice if it's not touched and I, you know, share it with her, right? So. Last weekend, it was Mother's Day weekend, and I ate a lot of naughty foods. More oily and uh, delicious. So I promised myself, uh, on the weekdays, I will catch up on going to the gym. So I was like super excited about that. But then at the same time, like, sometimes it's like one of those things, you don't want to go to the gym, but once you get there and you work out afterwards, you feel good. I think it was like Monday or Tuesday, I was sitting a lot on my butt, and then my leg fell asleep. And this was 30 minutes before I was going to go to the gym. My leg fell asleep and then I got up and I was going to the kitchen to refill on water. But because I couldn't feel my sleeping foot, it felt numb, right? I fell down and then I, I guess I sprained my foot or it felt like a fracture. Walking even on the heels lightly, it was very painful. Well, part of me is like, oh, I'm in pain, but then the other part of me was like, yes, now I have a legit reason to not go to the gym. Which is terrible because going to the gym is good for you. Well, going to the gym will be bad for you if you are exercising the wrong way. Then you would be doing something unhealthy for your body. Like, you know, when you lift weights and stuff, you need to have good posture. And when I go to the gym, I like to sweat. I typically go on the elliptical at least 30 minutes. My usual routine when I go to the gym used to be watching travel shows as I'm on the elliptical. But it's kind of tough to watch from your iPhone when you're like constantly going up and down. And then sometimes if you you know, if you have the wrong posture when you're looking down at your phone, it's not good for your neck. So what I started to do was listen to podcasts instead of uh, watching my iPhone. I'm gonna need to take smaller bites. It takes so long to chew if I fill my whole mouth up. So sometimes people complain to me that uh, they give so much to someone else, but they don't get anything back or as much in return. You know, that makes me think of what my mom told me. If you let someone borrow your money, don't expect it back. Just think of it as giving. And if they give it back, oh, then be thankful. Because if you expect it back and then you don't get it, then you're going to be very, probably a bit angry and annoyed. Just like negative emotions. If you can give and you can help someone, that's awesome. That's fantastic opportunity for you to exercise kindness. But if you feel pressured and you don't have the heart of giving, but you're forcing yourself, that can lead to the road of resentment. And that's not a good feeling. In some cases, you know, I think it's not bad to force ourselves 
to give. So everyone's heart of giving, it could be big, it could be small. A person with a small heart here, giving this much, feels like they're giving this much. A person with a big heart here, when they give this much, it feels like they're only giving a little bit because they're so used to giving. However, if you're a person with a small heart and you make yourself give more than you're used to, that's not always a bad thing because you're exercising your uh, muscles of kindness. But it also depends on your resources. If you have only this much, how can you give this much? Okay, if you have one dollar, how can you give ten dollars? You, you don't have ten dollars. So unless you go out and make the ten dollars, at this very moment, if you have one tomato, how can you give ten tomatoes to someone? If you feel like you're being forced to give something to someone, first off, you own the key to your resources. You can keep that gate locked, or you could open it up a little bit, or you can open it up all the way. Depends on you. Some people will make you feel bad about not sharing all that you have. But once again, uh, if you don't feel comfortable with something, don't feel pressure from other people. Now, one of the big life lessons I learned is when you give, what does giving mean? You're not expecting something back in return. So when you give, you give and that's it. Don't tally up how many times you help someone. Because if you start calculating, you're going to count how many times they helped you. And if it doesn't add up according to your judgment, you might feel frustrated, you might feel taken advantage of. So when you give, do not calculate, do not tally, just give and then forget about it. That person you give to, they may be very appreciative or they might just take it as a booger. That's, you know what, that's not up to you. You cannot um, alter their feelings of your present to them. Not all the time you give something to someone, they're going to appreciate it as much as you hoped them to be. That might be because that gift is not as useful as you thought. But you know what? That's okay. You gave something to them from your heart and just be happy about that. It doesn't matter how happy they are when they receive it. The fact that you imparted this uh, thought in the form of an object or in the form of an action to them, that in itself you should be happy about. There are people out there who gave something to you, but you didn't act in the way. You didn't act in the appreciative way that they were expecting from you. So if they get angry about you not reacting in the right way, I don't know how fair that is. It's like you're being forced to fake your appreciation. I mean, sometimes, you know, we make white lies and, be, and like we might not get a Christmas present that we like, but uh, we do want to show, oh, thank you for the thought. Let's have another stubby pencil. You know that roasty toasty taste? That's what it's got. Being able to give is actually a blessing. That means you have something to share. There's just too much chewing. At times, I wish that our teeth were designed where we just chew like 10 times and then we're done. But if we chew only a couple times and then swallow our meal, the flavor gets out of our mouth faster, right? So if you chew on something for a longer time, that flavor lingers in your mouth. Some of these zucchini strands, they're longer than my hair. Okay, so back to the topic of giving. 
You know what happens when um, both parties, both you and your friend or whoever, are calculating? All right, so let's say this is my friend, Mr. TP, toilet paper. He does something for me every day, let's say five times a day. And he's uh, tallying that up, right? However, what am I doing for him? He might be thinking, oh, this girl never does anything for me. She's using me all the time. However, I might do something very nice to Mr. TP, you know? I, when I wipe my mouth with him, when I'm filming a mukbang, he gets a taste of the food, right? So then, every week he might start calculating, tallying, oh, every week she's uh, feeding me delicious food. But look, if he is calculating five times a day he's doing something for me, and I'm doing one thing for him every uh, week, he's going to be very resentful to me. However, if he really appreciates every time I film a mukbang and every time I wipe, if he counts that as five points, in his mind, then we're equal. So if you tally up how many times someone helped you and how many times you helped someone, the two parties, they're going to think differently. This friend might be like, I helped her more than she helped me. But this friend might be thinking the same thing. It's funny. Right? If both people think they gave more than the other person gave to them. So that's why it's just to give and then forget about it. And if the other person, uh, they continue to be appreciative, that's just a bonus. Here's the thing. Sometimes people are more appreciative of what you did for them decades later. Okay, for example, growing up, when I was five years old, I... I yeah, I have my parents and, um, you know, they feed me and you know, they take me to the playground every once in a while. But I'm like, I want to go to the playground more. So I'm, you know, like as a kid, I'm like, oh, you didn't do this for me. I just want to, you know, why aren't you feeding me more spam? Because I used to love spam. And then almost 38 years goes by and I'm like, wow, my parents did a lot for me. Especially for the mama, right? She has you in her womb. Oh, when she's giving birth to you, it could be painful and it could take many, many hours for you to get out of that party. So although my parents have been more active in my life and taking care of me when I was five years old and when I was a toddler, I'm more appreciative of what they did for me now. Now I'm more independent. They don't need to keep feeding me. They don't have to watch over me and make sure I don't fall into random corners that I might miss when I'm running around the house. But looking back, I'm much more thankful. And actually, the older I get, the more appreciative I am of all that they've done for me. And as my appreciation for what they've done for me grows, it makes me think, do I want a kid? I mean, it's a huge responsibility. When you're raising a kid, you're giving up so much of yourself. You know, so much of your resources, so much of your time, energy, you know? When I was traveling in Asia for about six months, I met this lovely lady in Bangkok, just randomly on the street. Um, I just asked her a question, and from there we just got along and we hung out a couple times. Uh, she's elderly, she's, uh, if I remember correctly, she's in her 70s currently. And she invited me over to her house and she cooked this multi-course meal. She's actually born and raised in Cuba, but uh, lives in France. Well, she's all over the place, so she travels and whatnot. She did so much for me. She was very inviting, and, you know, there are certain questions about life, or maybe some experiences I've had, I just wanted to get her perspective. She was so open to talk about everything and anything, and I wanted to do something for her, but I didn't know what. It's not like I'm a good cook. And I'm like, whatever I cook for you, it is no match for what you have cooked for me and what you can cook for yourself. I asked her, like, do you, what do you need? Like, what would you like? I, I always try to figure out, like, something I could give to her, but I just couldn't figure out. So there would be times when you really want to give something to someone, but you don't know what. Like, what can I possibly do to match this and up? You know, I want to give more than what they gave me. How? Sometimes you're just stumped. You're like, I have no idea. Some people, it's easier to figure out what you know you should give them. Typically, I like to buy people lunch or dinner. But some people, 
Mm, we don't like to keep accumulating things. So what can you give people who are trying to live a minimalistic life? Well, one of the things is food. Taking them out to uh, a restaurant they've been wanting to check out. I'm full. Woo! I'll just finish this corner. For those of you who may be new to my channel, it's not my main goal to finish everything in front of me. Actually, there are times I try to finish all my food and I felt really sick the next day and I got major food coma and I just didn't feel healthy. Mmm, that was a creamy, creamy bite. I definitely ate more than what I usually would eat. Good thing is, since this is plant-based, I don't imagine it'll take too long to digest. I hope you guys enjoyed eating with me and talking about the gift of giving and um, whatever else we talked about. Well, I didn't really talk about the flavor, did I? Well, it tastes of basil and it tastes like pesto sauce, <laughs> you know? What else can I say about it? Some mukbangs, I eat something and it's like, wow, out of this world. But you know, sometimes when you make your own food, you already know what's inside. There's less of that kind of surprise factor. Especially while you're cooking, you might taste things as you go and then you're like, oh, taste, mmm. Oh, not salty enough. Let me put a little bit more sea salt. And then you taste it again. You're like, oh, it tastes a bit thick. Let's put some water in that. So it's kind of like a... For me, I perfect my recipe as I am cooking. So in today's mukbang, I didn't get surprised when I was eating the food. I'm like, I already know what it tastes like because I was perfecting this recipe in the kitchen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Miss Mina O for delicious selfies. Many of you guys know I love playing this game where I hide my face in food. I'll see you guys in the next travel video and mukbang. Bye bye!